guys, Tiffany, and this is my channel, Who's Your Handmade? Thank you so much for stopping by today. Today's video is another episode of Hashtag Friday Sews. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. As always, thank you so much to Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room for starting Hashtag Friday Sews and allowing all of us sewers to jump on board with that hashtag and spend our Fridays talking about what we've been sewing, what we hope to sew, and a little bit about life in between. Thank you, Jen, for sharing that hashtag with us. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. I would love it if you would consider subscribing. I would love to get to know you better and welcome you into the sewing community. And thank you so much to each one of my friends who are tuning in again today. Thank Thank you for coming back video after video and spending your time with me. It means so very much to me. Give this video a thumbs up if you like this kind of content and leave a comment down below. I would love to know about how your sewing week went. I love, love chatting with you guys down below in the comment section. So my week has been a little crazy, you guys. I had a little bit of a traumatic experience happen this week, and I'm gonna talk about that in the life portion, but uh, just know that it kind of affected my sewing this week. I did get a video out on Tuesday about my sewing plans, and that has helped me so, so much. I've said it before, I'll say it again, that making sewing plans is so beneficial for helping you kind of focus your mind in on sewing, on what you might want to accomplish, if you are kind of spinning in the wind, you don't know where to go with your plans, uh, just sit down for a little bit. Think about what you would love to have in your wardrobe and that will really help direct you. So making those plans, sharing them with you on Tuesday has helped ground me and helped me uh, to have a direction to go with my sewing. So I went ahead and picked up one of the plans that I have. This is Simplicity 9240. Sorry, sorry about the rack number there. Um, this is just a simple raglan sleeve sweatshirt. I'm making view A. Now Carol from So Carol, a dear, dear friend here on YouTube, uh, and she has a wonderful channel. I'll link it down below. I'm sure all of you know who she is. Uh, she gave me a little word of caution about this uh, pattern. She said that the uh, waistband and even the sleeves, the sleeve band uh, can be a little small, so I'm going to make sure that I have enough room on there. I did go ahead and cut it out, but I have enough uh, fabric left over so if those bands don't work then I can cut recut some more so I went ahead and cut it out of this fabric this is the fabric that I showed in my uh, plans video this was just a mystery bundle from Walmart like I said in the video um, one of those three yards for eight dollar things and it's actually a pretty nice a ribbed sweater knit is what I'm calling it. It looks like rib knit, but it's fluffy. Can you see how fluffy it is? <laughs> so I'm hoping that it makes a really nice sweatshirt. So this is for the main garment. Even the bands I'm gonna make, the, the waistband and the armbands are all gonna be out of this same fabric. And then what I did not know about this pattern, and even on the line drawings on the back, you can't tell that this pattern has Pockets. This sweatshirt, even view A, has pockets, inseam pockets that you uh, put in there. So, and you know, guys, I'm not a big pocket person. I am not a person that likes having pockets in my dresses and my skirts. I just don't like having them. I don't like how they wear on my hips. I'm hippie enough. <laughs> and usually pockets just kind of drag me down. But this sweatshirt, I thought to go ahead and add those pockets in um, and see how they do. So I didn't want to use this fluffy fabric because I don't want to make it any bulkier there at my waist um, than it's already going to be. So I pulled out a remnant of this fabric. This is a floral flannel from Joann's. This is their very cheap flannel that I purchased a ton of back when I started sewing. I actually talked about this flannel on my channel in another video uh, as a word of caution. I actually made Addie a dress entirely out of this flannel and it's beautiful. I mean, look at those collars. Look at that floral. 
but it fell apart, you guys. She wore it one time and the fabric was just disintegrating. It lit it was not in the seams, it was the fabric itself. It was just falling apart. So <laughs> I don't really love it for main fabric. I've been very, very cautious about using it, but I thought for pockets, it might be okay. And I love these colors. You're not gonna really see them, I assume, especially since you can't really see them um, in the line drawings. I assume they're gonna be pretty hidden, but it kind of coordinates anyway. So those mauve kind of colors kind of match the rest. So. I have cut that out, it's ready to go. I haven't had a chance to sew um, on it because of life things that I'm gonna talk about here in a little bit, um, but I'm excited to get started. It does seem like a pretty straightforward, easy sew, so I'm excited to get busy on that. I am making a size extra large. This pattern comes in extra small to extra large. I always refer to the finished garment measurements. That's gonna tell you what your finished garment is going to fit like and this one has a finished garment measurement of the chest the bust area of 55 for the extra large and that is plenty big in the bust line what I'm gonna watch though again are those bands like Carol uh, forewarned me about and I'm gonna make sure those are roomy and comfortable enough around my belly region so excited to see how this one sews up and then the second sewing project that I haven't started yet but I'm super excited to is uh, a little skirt, a couple skirts for Addie. So I showed these fabrics in my plans video. I will link that video down below, by the way, you guys, if you did not catch that on Tuesday. Um, I showed these two corduroy fabrics. I've had these in my stash for a long time. As in like, this is one of the first garment fabrics that I picked up. These are from Hobby Lobby. They're really cute. You can see the little jungle theme on there. There's a monkey. And then this one's really pretty with the floral. So these I want to make into a couple skirts for Addie June. And in my plans video, I talked about not having a pattern, but having specific um, requirements for this pattern. And so many of you have encouraged me to self draft a pattern for myself. Take my requirements, take what I want this uh, skirt to be like, and try to make it myself. So I guess I have just kind of doubted myself. I've kind of thought that my skills are not there to self-draft something, but this skirt, I want it to be really simple. So I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to take a little skirt out of Addie's current wardrobe and use that for length and waist uh, measurements. So I'm going to see how I do. I'm really excited to give that a try and thank you so much to those who reached out with encouragement to do that. You guys are believing in me and it's giving me such confidence so thank you. And that is it for the sewing that happened uh, this week. So I want to take you guys on a little tour of the sewing room. My husband and I have been working hard to set up uh, furniture and unpack boxes and totes and I didn't get to take you guys on a tour like I wanted to last week. Uh, because of some traumatic experiences that we had last weekend, my father was actually involved in a very serious, uh, tragic, and actually in two cases, fatal accident. Um, we could have lost him so, so easily. It was a vehicle accident, head-on collision, and it was just so, so tragic and horrific. Um, I got the call on Thursday. I was at work, and I had to rush to leave work, rush to the hospital. My father's still in the hospital. He has several broken bones, seven broken ribs. He had a broken femur, a broken pelvis, a broken back. So absolutely just so broken and battered, but he's doing good. The doctors have done so much to help him. He is still in the hospital, like I said, but we're hoping that he gets moved to a rehab center uh, soon so that he can work on rehab, work on building his strength back up and get back to his normal every day. He's a farmer, so it's really bothering him to not be out in the field harvesting right now, but we're, we're all there for him. We're all helping mom 
Mom is doing everything right now. She's there at the hospital with him and she has been since Thursday. So if you think about it, give us some good thoughts, some positive thoughts or say a prayer if you're a praying person. We would so, so appreciate that. It's really shifted our lives here right now. Everything is about providing support to my parents and uh, helping them out and especially helping out on the farm. My husband has taken off some work this week to help my brother bring in the crops and do the harvest harvesting for dad. And it really is humbling. Uh, going through an experience like this is very humbling. There has been so many people that have reached out with prayers and kind thoughts and, and very kind words. And then it really teaches you to hug your loved ones, <laughs> hug them, appreciate them, tell them that you love them because in the blink of an eye, they could be gone. And um, I definitely, definitely have been feeling all the feelings this week of being so appreciative for my family and how, how my father was spared um, from this horrible, terrible accident. So that has taken over our lives, but hopefully dad will be in the rehab and get better. And so we can get back to some normal stuff here at home. So now let's take a little tour of the sewing room. So like I said, Josh and I have been putting together a lot of Ikea furniture. And when I say we, I mean he. <laughs> He's been doing a lot of putting all those uh, Calyx units together and these tables right here that you're seeing my sewing machines on. And he's just, he's doing everything that I put in front of him and he's so, so sweet. I'm so blessed to have him as a hubby. And I've been unpacking. I've unpacked all of my fabric and I'll show you all of that. Now this is just gonna be kind of a quick walkthrough. I do plan on doing more in-depth looks at the sewing room. I want to talk about organization. I wanna talk about what's working for me um, more in detail and maybe it will help you out or give you some ideas for your own sewing room. Not saying that I'm doing everything correct or, or the right way or even how it will be in a year, but this is working for me right now and I'm so, I'm so happy with this space. So let me take you off there and we'll walk around the sewing room together. Okay, here at the beginning of the sewing room, I wanted to show you all of the progress. <laughs> I'm calling this progress. It looks like a mess, I know, but this is all of the Ikea boxes and the moving boxes and the totes that we have unpacked and it means progress, you guys. So I'm happy with it and I'm showing it off. So coming through here, the hallway to the sewing room. I did have a Calyx unit here. You can tell that the floor <laughs> needs swept again where I moved it. I think I'll get another one actually for that wall. I really liked a Calyx unit being there. More boxes here that need unpacked, just things that I haven't found a spot for yet. And then as you come into the sewing room, there is my first set of Calyx units. This is all my woven fabric and I have put them together by fabric type. So it is so amazing to come over here you guys and know that this is my corduroy stash and this is um, different kinds of specialty woven fabrics. There's my flannels, there's my silky types, this over here is a whole row of cottons, just basic cotton. So I love, love, love seeing all of the different types of fabric that I have right there together. I don't have to go look for every single different type of flannel that I have because it's all there together. So I'm really loving these. They're working out really well. Still just have some paraphernalia sitting around that I need to distribute and put away. Those are some new fabrics that need folded up. Just a table that my husband had these tables in here to work on um, for building the furniture. Kiddo's toys because she likes to come in here and sit with mama. Here's those beautiful windows that are looking out over our beautiful farmland. These totes are full of some scrap fabric. I have scrap batting in them. Fabrics that were given to me by a family friend that I'm not real sure I'm gonna hold on to. So I'm just looking for places for some of this stuff. Let me swing around here and show you this wall. 
So that was the hallway that we just came down right there on our right. I have a little bookshelf here. This one was where my patterns was in my old sewing room, but I've repurposed it into a sewing bookshelf. So I've got my sewing journals in there. I've got a lot of sewing books, my Ahead of the Curve book. I've got a Tilly and the Buttons book in there, so etc. And then here are my sewing tables, and I am in love, you guys. These are, these are the focal point of the sewing room that I just love. It's a workstation, it's a sit and chat with the hubby station, it's obviously a sewing station, so it's just amazing. It's like the hub um, that the entire room just kind of rotates around, and I love it. So these are just two Ikea tabletops, and then on this one over here, I have four legs. I have my uh, Baby Lock Claim Serger, and then I will bring out my Brother 1034D and sit on the other side there. It's actually under the table <laughs> right there hiding. I haven't brought it out yet. And then on the other side, I have an Alex unit and then legs, and that table is exclusively for um, my Crescendo machine. I only wanted the Crescendo on that one there. So that's my sewing tables. And then that's my little rolling sewing cart. I love having that there handy. I'm gonna keep things in there that I want at the ready uh, when I need them. Now this is my old cutting table. This is the cutting table that I purchased from Joann's, purchased it online, and it was, it was the thing that revolutionized my sewing in my other space. It provided so much worktop space that I needed desperately, as opposed to using the dining room table. But this table is not ideal. It's very wobbly. Um, it's not very sturdy. And I am looking to replace it. So the hubby is actually building me another cutting table. These two Calyx units here we've put on the, oh, what do you call those risers or the stands? They have legs now. And then Josh is gonna add some more um, structure to the sides. And then he's got a piece of plywood for the top. And he's gonna make me a four by six cutting table over here. So the one that's here in front of the window is not staying. I'll fold it away, put it to the side, and then I'll bring it out if I have friends that come over and need an extra cutting table. More boxes um, that I need to unpack. This is a really nice table. It has wings, kind of folds up, kind of like the cutting table, but it's not as tall and definitely not as wide. I do love that little cart. Josh bought it for me actually last year for, for Christmas. So I'm gonna keep it. Um, I'm not sure where it's gonna go, but it's definitely gonna stay in here. And then as we come along this side, this is my knit fabric. So another identical set of Calyx units. And this is all of my knits. Again, a cataloged by knit type. So by fabric type. So if you were looking for a rib knit, you would come over here and here is all of my rib knits. And then it continues down here. If you were looking for sweater knits, you would look over here. And I have all of my sweater knits together. So <laughs> the organization piece is just making my world just amazing right now. And it's so fun to come over here and just shop my stash. It's like visiting a, a fabric store. <laughs> you find a pattern and then you come over here and shop uh, the fabric store. So it's amazing. I'm, I'm so happy with this kind of setup. And then coming over here to the right, we have another Calyx unit. This is another four by four. Now this is overflow knit fabric. A lot of children's fabrics. I think actually almost all of this is children's fabric fabrics. I do have some uh, swim. This is swim and active wear there. And then I've also put my patterns as they were in the old sewing room. I've just put them here. I'm not happy with this kind of a system. So if you have a suggestion for how you do your patterns, how you store them in your own sewing room, I would love to hear it. 
But check this out, you guys. Check out my binders. Now, these binders hold the paper patterns, my PDF patterns that I've printed out and traced or cut out in some cases for Addy. And those, those folders hold those. Now, before in my old sewing room, those were up above my head on a wire rack. I almost lost my head every time I wanted to pull those down. But now... Just look at them. They're so organized. They're so accessible. I can pull them out so easily and they all fit perfectly in a cube. <laughs> so I am just, I'm just so happy. It's the little things, you guys. It's really making me super, super happy. I have some just little knickknack kind of things up there on the top right now. Obviously, I need to do a little bit more um, putting away and organizing, but for now, I can see it. And then this is another Calyx unit, another 4x4, and this is all about quilting. So this 4x4 unit is my entire stash of quilting fabrics or quilting projects. Some of them have already been started, some of them, you know, need to be started. So a lot of quilting projects, my goodness, keeps it's going to keep me busy for years and years and years. So definitely need to be using my quilting stash as well. Up on the top are some just containers that I haven't uh, found a, a spot for yet. And then down here on the floor, uh, these are little containers that I can use to organize around the sewing room and haven't found a use for them yet. An empty tote that I was able to empty out. And then I have my ironing board here in a temporary spot. It really needs to go all the way over, uh, over, let's see here, over there is where I really want it to go along that wall. Uh, but I got boxes and stuff in the way. So for now, the iron is right there. I have my dress form here with paint that needs to be put away and stored. <laughs> and then we're back to the crescendo. This is her side of the table. And these are my Alex units. Really nice uh, Alex units that I've tried to organize a little bit in there. It's going to take a little more organizing and a little more time to get it how I want it. That one right there was the most difficult thing for Josh to put together. He definitely did not enjoy that. <laughs> and that's the tour of my sewing room as of right now, you guys. It's a journey and we're going to be sharing it as we get it more and more organized. Thank you so much for following along and keeping track of our journey. Thank you for taking an interest. It means so very much to me. Okay, so that is the tour of the sewing room. I'm so happy with the progress we've made. We have a ways to go. <laughs> Y'all saw the boxes, <laughs> but I'm very, very happy with this space. Very blessed to have so much space to spread out and to uh, continue with my love of sewing in this new space. Okay, that's going to do it for this Hashtag Friday Sews video. Let me know down below what you're doing this weekend, what you got accomplished last week in your sewing. I would love, love to chat with you down below. Thank you so much for your support and your friendship, you guys. I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.